With TV viewers discovering and consuming content in ever more new ways, what impact has this behaviour had on the way you create content? Massive impact. I think our biggest learnings over the last probably five years is that we have to invest more in research and insight, more in content that travels across every platform. So certainly beyond um, the, the cinema screen or linear television, we have to ensure that we have um, much more significant rights to content. And more important today than ever, we need to ensure that we have brand defining content that will travel beyond the branded television channel so it can live on its own on a non-linear platform just as well as it can on a linear platform. So that means integrating branding and ownership of right from the artist all the way through to the, to the actual show. So there's been massive change over the last five years and it's significant even now, more and more change. It's really interesting, okay. And uh, what do you find most interesting about the intertwining of linear TV and social networks? Well, it's interesting for us, it's been a given for the audience to want to interact with our content. Our audience, the millennial audience, are born connected, so they expect to be able to interact with us in some way. And I think you could arguably say that MTV was the first brand to do social TV before social TV even existed. Back many, many years ago, when Microsoft first launched Instant Messenger, we integrated that into the TV channel so that people could talk to the VJ. So that was kind of the first element of social interaction with the TV channel. And of course today, now we, for MTV at least, um, that brand is the most um, socially active in Europe. So we're here in a European conference, so MTV is number one many, many months. And we're always trending one, two or three on Twitter. Some of our brands have exceed 40 million friends on Facebook. For example, SpongeBob and South Park both exceed 40 million um, friends on Facebook. So social is at the heart of everything we do. And can you tell us more about Viacom International Media Network's plans to harness peer recommendations in 2013? Yeah, well, if you've heard me speak over the last five years, I've always said search and recommendation is at the heart of everything we do. It's imperative that our audience can communicate with each other, share content, and make sure that content is driving towards linear TV viewing. Um, if linear TV viewing isn't available, then we want to make sure that people want to download content through a pay environment and sharing is, is imperative. So, so peer recommendation, all of it drives towards linear tune-in, paid downloads. It's, it's kind of the heart of everything we do. So it's a day-to-day -day for us. There's a few examples more recently where we've actually taken content that we've discovered through the internet. So whether that's through YouTube or other um, content sharing sites. This, 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 in the case, one case of ours within the MTV brand, we discovered Janoskins. So it's a bunch of American kids trying to do the kind of jackass product that we had many years ago, but doing it in a different way, in a more socially engaged way. And we've taken that, them now into a branded show, which is doing really well in, in both Australia and the UK. And we're looking to roll it out beyond um, online into a linear TV format, so we've just started broadcasting that in Australia. So it's kind of that world of content being discovered online, becoming into a TV show, and then conversely, um, we even have shows which are actually based upon social media phenomenon. So Catfish is another show which we're running on MTV, which is all about online dating, and a catfish is someone that makes a fake profile, and then our television show is about following some of these fake profiles and, and discovering what the story is behind them and, and um, huge amount of social media interaction with that. And then of course all our big entertainment shows drive massive voting through social media engagement. So it's not just about saying here's a show and you can interact with it on Facebook and Twitter, it's actually using the social media technology. So for example we work with a company called Bunchball that help with gamification around voting and that helped drive 185 million votes to the last EMA show and right now we're about to go up for the next um, Kids Choice Awards and already we've driven 300 million votes through social media, widgets, all the different technologies you can use but at the heart of everything of course is great content and that's essentially what drives all of these technologies is great content.